Hello everyone, this is Sean Mullery from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo and what I'm going to cover in this particular lesson is a very powerful part of the simulator, um, a very powerful tool that it has which is the stimulus tool. Now um, up until now if we wanted to put an input, in other words if we wanted to change an input pin on uh, wh when we were running our program, we did that by hand. We, we basically took Put our, brought our mouse over to that port pin and change the value of it manually. What I'm going to show you here is that there are systems whereby you can tell it to um, put a stimulus into a port pin um, and you can decide at what sort of stimulus that is. So the one we're going to look at today is where we put in a regular pulse into the pin RB0 in order to give us a regular rising and then a falling edge. We can tell it how often we want it to change from high to low, so how long it stays at high and, and how long it stays at low, when we want it to start doing that stimulus and when we want it to stop. For the moment we're just going to do the stimulus from the very beginning and we're never going to end and by never ending I mean obviously until the program itself ends. So what I'm going to use to demonstrate this, uh, and again, you, you should probably have this program yourself um, because it's from a, a few lessons ago. This is uh, the program whereby we um, used uh, the interrupt. So here are the interrupts here. We used the external interrupt um, flag to determine whether a rising edge had occurred on RB0. If it had, we increased a count variable and uh, that count variable then was later put out on port B. Now it was put out on the rest of port B, in other words, bits one to bits seven of port B. It didn't use um, bit zero, obviously, because that was a, an input, uh, it was the external interrupt, okay? So that's why we shifted by one place here. So hopefully you've remembered that. You can see here the setup that I've done, obviously, um, I've uh, set Tris B to one, that allows RB0 to be an input, uh, but all the rest of them to be outputs. And I've um, enabled the external, or I've, I've set the external intro to be edge triggered. Um, and that's positive edge triggered. Uh, I've set the external interrupt uh, to be enabled and I've set the global enable interrupt as well. We don't need to set that peripheral enable interrupt for this particular one because uh, it's set by the global enable interrupt. Um, so just to remind you how this works quickly, and so we just uh, set it running there. And uh, I'll just go down here. You can see that RB0 is uh, set as a digital input and the rest of them are digital outputs. Well, you can't actually see that, but if I move it out there, you will. Uh, I don't actually need RA0 here. We're not using it in this particular case, so I'll remove that um, for clarity. And we can see here that what's gonna happen is if I go up to a value of one, we can see that my count has now started at a value of one. If we go back to zero, nothing should happen for the moment. Then if I go to one again, we can see that my count has now gone to a bi the binary value of two going out there. Again, if I go back to zero, nothing happens. And if I go to one again, we should say that it now goes to one one, which of course is the uh, is a three. And finally, I'll just um, do it once more where I should go from uh, one one to one zero zero, which is what's happened there. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop there at that. And I'm going to show you uh, this tab here, which is called the stimulus tab. Okay, now there are lots of different types of stimulus we can put into it, but I'm going to go for a clock stimulus. In other words, something that happens at regular intervals. I can uh, set the pin that I want it to occur on here. And so it's obviously going to be RB0, which is going to be my input. That's my external interrupt. Uh, the initial value, not vitally important in this particular case, but we'll start it off at a value of low. We then need to say the number of instruction cycles that we want to spend at each different, uh, in each different scenario. So um, clearly one, one instruction cycle would not be a lot. Now, remember that if we're dealing with a four megahertz um, crystal or free, um, clock frequency, that would mean that every one instruction cycle would be one microsecond. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change this to be uh, one million. And that would give us an idea that if we were dealing with a four megahertz crystal, uh, that would mean that I would uh, stay low for one second. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go high for one second. Now you just double click in there in order to put in a value. If I went for a value like a thousand, um, what would occur is that um, 
that would be fine. It would it would stay for it, it would go low for one millisecond, high for one millisecond, low for one millisecond, and so on. But the problem is that on the simulator, that would still appear to run relatively quickly, and uh, we wouldn't really be able to see it changing. So I've I've gone for a much longer value, but you can modify that as you as you see fit. Uh, you can see here that I wanted to begin at the start, okay? But you could also actually put in some sort of a, a detail in here as to when exactly you wanted to start. In other words, how many cycles into the beginning that you wanted to to occur, and uh, you could decide when you wanted it to end as well. I'm going to have it start at the beginning, uh, at the very start of the program, and I don't want you to ever end. In other words, as long as the program is running, I want uh, this uh, signal to be going high and low. And uh, what I do then is this little button over here, apply synchronous stimulus, I click that, you'll see this little sign come up here, or the little message come up here, synchronous sim stimulus has been, uh, for, sorry, removed successfully, that's because I had it previously, so I'll hit it again, synchronous stimulus is applied successfully. So make sure it says that on it first um, before you run it, and if it means you haven't clicked that twice, then that's perfectly fine. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the, de the debugger here again, and, um, we can see here that it's already begun doing its job. You can see it that this is going from zero to one, okay? And we can also see that my count is going up here. And it's going up in sequence of that. So every time that goes to a high value, it changes the count. Okay, so this is a very good way for, uh, you know, as, as our programs are going to increase in complexity, um, the test information that we're going to put into it in order to test it will have to increase in uh, in complexity uh, in order to actually keep up with that. So what I want you to do um, is to try and get this program working exactly as we have it here, uh, so that you at least get one program working with the, with the simulator and the stimulus first uh, before we move on to any exercises regarding it.